For centuries, common terns kissed the skies above the St. Lawrence River. For thousands of these water birds, the river is where life begins. Once you pick up a baby turd and you look at them and you realize that these birds can live into their 20s, they fly thousands of miles every winter to South America, and then they come back, and they come back very often to the exact same island and nest again. Uh, they're really quite remarkable. They're one of the animals on the river here that's really quite special. In the early 1900s, the common terns all but disappeared because of hunting. But protective legislation in the 1920s and 30s brought the, the terns back. The head of the island up there. 30 years later, the terns faced other threats. A lot of birds were affected severely by DDT and by other, uh, or, uh, other chemicals and contaminants. Uh, terns probably were affected as well. In 1989, Dr. Lee Harper began a program to restore the tern population to the St. Lawrence River. Oh, no, it's a peregrine falcon. It's still a peregrine falcon. No, no way. Oh, boy, it's hard to be a tern, that's for sure. The biggest change in the tern colony was probably the increase in ring-billed gulls. Gulls are larger, they nest two weeks earlier than terns. Uh, and they can exclude terns from the primary nesting sites on islands. Dr. Harper has been working with threatened and endangered species his whole life. There's another one. There's the second one. There's the second one. When the program began, Dr. Harper and his team counted only 400 nesting pair of terns. But Harper and his team found it's a very big river. He realized he couldn't do it alone. No single agency or group or entity could do it on their own. So 10 years after he began, 60 miles upstream from Messina, New York, where he follows turns, just outside of Clayton, New York, volunteers and staff from Save the River, working with the Thousand Islands Land Trust, the River Edge Association, and other volunteers began working together to restore the turns. Save the River started monitoring common turns in 1999 there are 14 to 21 nesting sites along the St. Lawrence. Save the River monitors six uh, common turn nesting sites, which includes two natural shoals, so natural islands that they nest on, and four navigational cells that have been restored to be able to uh, be a, a suitable nesting site for common turns. Like Dr. Harper, volunteers and staff from Save the River tagged the birds to monitor them. Right. Common terns are a New York State threatened species. They are not federally listed. And by tagging them, we give researchers the information that they need on fledging and productivity and nest pairs. Ouch, it looks like it hurts the birds. Oh no, they're not hurting. Our presence stresses them out, but it doesn't hurt whatsoever. You see how loose the band is? And it, it's turns and it, of course their feet are very large when they're born, when they hatch. And so the birds will grow. The band is not tight on them now and their legs won't grow much, if any at all. They may actually shrink a little bit as they get older. And those individually numbered bands, uh, we've banded this year we'll probably ban our 39,000th turn chick, which is incredible over the years. We've got band returns from, oh gosh, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, even Argentina. In 2015, the entire river team counted and recorded over 1,100 pairs of nesting turns along the St. Lawrence River. So we've more than doubled the population. It's gone up and down since then. We've had some issues with competitors and predators, but by and large, we have just tremendously increased the number of breeding pairs on the St. Lawrence River. They did it together with wildlife management. Just by simple things, little management issues, the fencing to keep the chicks from falling off, the wires to help prevent uh, some of the predators from getting the chicks, the little wooden teepees, the shelters, so they have, a, they have shade from the sun and the rain and that sort of thing. It's, it's really helped increase their productivity and, and produce a lot more chicks every year. It's quite a bit of work that go into each nav cell and each shoal that we prepare pre-season before the common terns come back to nest. Even with all the hard work, there are still threats to the terns, and it's not just from predators. Money support is always an issue and right. threatens the life of this program. This project is primarily funded by volunteer organizations and by the state of New York. 
both the Department of Environmental Conservation and the New York Power Authority. And there are other threats from us. The human part of that equation, when the birds started to make their resurgence, so many of the shoals that were their natural rookeries were built upon. And obviously people aren't going to give up their beautiful homes and houses for the birds. It's hard to be a turn. Dr. Harper says swirling in the skies is another threat. Where the St. Lawrence River begins, just across from the U.S. and upstream from the American Turn Restoration Project, Wolf Island in Ontario, Canada, sits in the middle of what is described by environmentalists as part of a bird migration superhighway. Since 2009, 86 wind turbines have been installed and are blowing into this bird flight path. The most recent 2017 study released by the Wind Energy Bird Monitoring Database shows that in the first year of operation and after three years of monitoring, this wind farm recorded the highest rate of bird casualties of any wind project in Northeast America. Should you care if turns take flight or fail? According to Dr. Harper, turns matter because he says they're one part of what keeps our fragile ecosystem healthy. And right now, he says, they can't make it on their own. This turn management and monitoring program is an effort to help restore the turn population to a level where the birds can be removed from the endangered species list and fly on their own. The project has really benefited over the years through a lot of cooperation between state and federal agencies and volunteers and organizations. And that framework is very, very important. It's a cooperative effort that's been very successful and I hope it continues.